Welcome to Coffee Happy Number Two. This is my final video. This is me hopefully having some questions and answers from Instagram. And there goes my lighter. Yes, I have a lighter. No, I do not smoke. I will explain that lighter to you before I go any further. First, this is Zippo. I really like Die Hard. Come out to the coast. We'll get together. Have a few laughs. Okay, that's not why I bought the lighter. I bought the lighter because of Resident Evil, the video game, the original that came out when I spent half the damn game trying to find a fucking lighter. Then it dawned on me in real life that if this happens, I don't have a lighter because I don't smoke. Since then, I went and bought like five or six of these Zippo lighters. They're all $13, and then the fuel is like $13, but I will never not be without fire. And these bitches light in the rain. Guaranteed. As long as you have fuel in them, this bitch will light. Of course, it would embarrass me too. <laughs> but it will light every fucking time. So, let's see if there's any questions for Instagram. So I moved this thing over here so I can actually read them. So, my bro is like the only one here. Actually, I think Brianna and my bro are here, but they look like they might be gone. Shell's here. Shaolin's here. Is anybody else here? Because if you're not here, I'm going to switch over to TikTok and see what happens. And I'll give you like five seconds. Four, three, two, no one. All right. Thank you, Instagram, for watching. Anybody who's new to my channel, um, thank you guys. I hope to do more martial art videos here. I don't know how to not try to be as realistic as possible. I do say things that piss off other martial artists. Yes, my funny bone is still hurting from when I hit it with the lightsaber. But, um, you know, hopefully um, I'll get more followers. I'll get people who will actually be willing to help me get my acting career off the ground since I've been doing this for 21 years and haven't gotten one real job yet. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Greatly appreciate the whole 965 of you that are here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do make thank you videos for y'all all on YouTube. And though I get my social medias mixed up, you guys know who you are. Appreciate it. Be well. Gotta share that. So while I'm working on sharing this damn video, let's see. Okay. Nope. It'll work. Oh no. I hit the wrong damn button. That's why I hate technology. Okay, that shit's 44 minutes long. It's almost an hour. All right. Demo rant. All right. Now let's post that shit. And while that's happening, Somebody just followed me, so thank you. I now currently have, where is the, that thing. So I currently have 957 followers here on Instagram. So thank you, Instagram. If you happen to pop up here and see this, thank you guys very much. Um, and it's actually ready. My other videos will be ready on YouTube within the hour or so. And now I'm going to go TikTok living. Oh, she's pretty. I don't know who you are. Yes. And I don't know why you followed me, but I love you. If only that was I my don't crush. I know who you are. Alright, so now I'm going to go living on TikTok for questions and answers. Okay. All right. Hello, TikTok. I just got off of Instagram making a YouTube video for Instagram. And now I'm here for a question and answers about martial arts. If you are here, you should know that your questions will be featured in my final video for tonight. That is four minutes and 46 seconds rolling in. I will give people at least five minutes to um, acknowledge me. I have no idea what any of that stuff means. 
there's a lot of things going on on social media that my dumb ass just doesn't understand. So, yeah, like I'll be 48 next Monday. Me and, um, me and, um, me and technology will never be friends. All right, let's just clear that out right away. Me and technology will never, ever, ever really be friends. All right. Yeah, I think my stuff is still recording here. Okay, yep, still recording. So, five minutes in. All right, invite another host. No, I'm not going to invite another host because I am only talking about martial arts. And I don't know if they're going to be comfortable hosting things, you know. So, no one's asking me any questions because no one's here. I have one viewer. Hello, dear friend. And I have no viewers, just like that. And now I have three viewers. So, thank you. Oh, and I have no viewers again. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works for me on TikTok. With Instagram, I generally have people. Hello, one viewer. How are you? I have no idea if you are going to respond. No, you are not because you are gone. Okay, I have two viewers. I don't know if you guys are going to ask me questions or not, but this is... um. Basically, an open forum. If you want to ask me questions about martial arts, my questions will be asked and answered here. And also, I'm recording a YouTube video. Don't worry, I will not be revealing your name intentionally. And I have no one again. No, I have two. No, I have one. I should go viral for just like having how many people jump in and out of this live. Yeah, because that's fucking awesome. Yeah. So I still have one person. I have two people. You guys have any martial art questions? I still have two people, but one person disappeared and another person replaced them. Nope, I got no people. I have one person. You have any martial art questions? You, I had another person. One person went in, one person came out. Okay, another person's gone. I have one person. They popped back in. I'm not seeing any names. I'm just seeing letters and blank faces. I have three people. Do any of the three of you have any martial art questions? Did you? Nope, they're gone. And there, there's two more people. And nope, there's one person left. You have any? Nope, they're gone. This is so much fun. This literally is so much fun watching people pop in and out, but no one's asking me questions. Okay, so for everybody popping in and out, this is me giving you a chance to ask me martial art questions. If you don't have any martial art questions and you want to learn stuff, this is the place for that. If you want to just keep popping in and out, this is being recorded. My reaction is being recorded, and it's going to be a blast when it gets posted on YouTube. Because this is my last video for the night, being that it is 11.41, and I would like to get in the shower by midnight, and we have two, three, we have three people, we have two people. Are they going to stay? Nope, they're leaving. Just as fast as they got here, they're leaving in the blink of a stand or stump. So yeah, I have one person. Are you going to ask me more short questions? I have two people. Nope, they're gone. This is awesome. This is awesome. This would be the video that goes viral. How many people can you win and lose in less than 20 minutes? And I had a guy that just dropped out. Yeah. So yeah, I have two people now. Three fingers, two people, one person. No one's asking me martial art questions. Is there like a way I could put a text in here so that people know what this video is about? Because I don't know how to do that. I have one person again. No. If you have martial art questions, now's the time. No, I'm on here till midnight. After midnight, I'm getting the hell off of here. Yep, yep, that's it. They're gone. Yeah. So for you guys here on YouTube watching my face, I have one person. I have one person. Are you going to ask martial art questions? I have two people. Are either of you going to ask martial arts? Nope, they're gone. Vanishing sun. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, for you guys here on YouTube, watching me make a fool of myself. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to title this bitch. Watch me make a fool out of myself. Um, so people are popping up on my Instagram. And that little bar there is a zero right now. But people are popping up there. There's a person, there's a person. Yeah, there's a person. But is that person going to? Nope, they're gone. Just like that. I am having the time of my life being dissed on TikTok. And to make sure where I was at before I announced that shit. Alright, so I have good connection. I have one person. People are popping up. I guess I'm being trolled because no one's asking me any questions. I do not know how to put text in. I have another person and another person. Okay, so if you're still here... You can ask me martial art questions and I will give you an answer, possibly a demonstration, and you're also going to be in my reaction video to me being dissed on TikTok because that's what this video is going to have to be titled because every time someone gets in and I mention it, people pop out just like you're doing right now. Okay. I'm going to learn a lot more about this because I think I need to find a way to put like topics on this thing. I'm an idiot, so I don't know how to do that. 
There's one person here. Please, sir, or ma'am, do you have any questions? There's two people. There's two people. Do you have any questions on martial arts? You know, how to fight, how not to fight, what to do, what not to do. You know, do I have a YouTube? It's called Kung Fu Havoc number two. You're going to see this video. You know, um, I don't know if any other martial artists want to be a guest host. But it's looking like that might be my option. Because it says, invite another host to go live together. I don't know anybody who's up at this time that does martial arts. Especially on the East Coast, because I'm in Virginia. But if you want to go live and be on this TikTok plus reaction video on how many times I can get dissed on TikTok, um, feel free to pop in. And if you are a martial artist, we can have a debate about martial arts. See, I left Instagram because um, I was done doing what I had promised them to do with the lightsaber show and some more stuff. And, um, you know, trying to build my title here. You know, I have more people here following me than I do on Instagram. However, I have more people um, interacting with me on Instagram than I have on TikTok. You know, I don't have whatever you guys are looking for, but I have two people. So I'm glad I have two people. My phone has a gangster lean. It's probably going to fall at any moment. Nope, I have one person, one person, one person there. I feel like I'm one of those guys at the... Um, those auction houses. Yeah, can I get another person? Get another person. Yeah, can I get another person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I get? Oh, I got two people. I got two people. Can I get two people? Nope. I got two people. I got one person. I got one person. I got two people. I got two people. I literally have two people. Nope. I have one person. So yeah, I have two people. Do any of you guys want to ask questions about martial arts? You know, because I know you're popping in, but you're not reacting. You know, and I'm basically turning this video that I'm doing for my YouTube channel into a reaction because I have one person in. I have two people in. I have two people in. I have three people in. Are you people going to ask me questions about martial arts? Would you like to see a martial arts demonstration? Nope. Because two of those people just left. And another person popped back in. And they popped back out. And this is so much fun. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, because no one's like staying. Alright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a martial arts demonstration for YouTube one more time. And TikTok can just watch. Ah, I got somebody. Show some moves, less talking, or get more and you'll get more yeah the last time I did that and I thank you very much the last time I did that nobody stayed when I was doing moves so for you because you're the only one here now we'll do some chobos let me um put you back so that you can't fall down all right so chobos for short sticks depending on the kimpo that you have been taught boom, boom, boom. You're never going to do that. I should use a lightsaber. Besides, I don't think anybody's going to come back. So, TikTokers, this isn't going to be that fun because I'm short and the ceiling is short. can't do anything in the house because it's raining outside so I can't do anything fancy but yeah have to step back ah uh, let me wave at the few people that have actually come oh that does not say wave that says invite I'm sorry I have one person, and I thank you very much for being here. Anyway, I should probably talk more about martial arts while I work this saber around. Now, if you are familiar with lightsabers, um, you should check out my bro, Courtney Monroe, Saber Night Lights. He'll set you right. I'm just a novice. He is the expert. However, when it comes to Kung Fu, that's what I do. This probably isn't impressing anybody, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm not here to impress, I'm here to teach. I'm also here to talk truth. But yeah, I wanna thank you all here for being here. I'm probably gonna call it a night. I was hoping to do a question and answer section because usually when I do martial arts, most people walk away 
and they want to talk. This is the first time when people haven't wanted to talk or ask questions. As a martial artist, it is very important for me to teach what I practice as I practice what I preach. And these commas, we have something that's going to throw me on the ground. Now when you're working with commas, you have to understand these short range weapons. And you don't do that. Because that happens. If that happens in battle, you die. And you don't do that. Or that. Let's try it again. Just so that you guys can see that's something that you don't do. I tried to do that one slow. So, that one? That didn't work. Yeah, I tried to do it simultaneously. It still didn't work. All right, so block, slice, slice. Boom. Now in the movies, you can do that shit because it's a movie. Damn, should have got the nunchucks. I'm going to get it right this time. Now you have different positions of fighting. So you can go this way. You can go this way. Still didn't get it. <laughs> We're going to try it again. Double win. Nope. Double fail. Woo. Okay, quadruple fail. Didn't get it. It's supposed to end with both of them down here. Not there. One more again. <laughs> now the left hand gets it and the right hand does it. And now the left hand totally drops it. All right, time to get serious. And I dropped it. And I lost the leg. All right, so I'm going to switch these commas off and use them as tampas in a minute. For those who don't know what tampas is, they're the police batons. I do not actually have a pair of tampas. These will be my substitute. Now, where, when their tapas are concerned, tapas have the unique ability to spin. These are common practice weapons, but they have the same stability as a tampa. Now, the thing about a tampa is, you're basically two in one, because you basically have a bow staff that swings out, only it's a short bow. So it's like a chill bow with a stick in it. Boom, boom. You know, and it's also short range combat. Block, block, strike, block, strike, strike. I understand how that works. So, we'll do block drills. So, for those who are still here, we're going to end this with learning how to block with your tapas. All right? So, there are a lot of blocks that are incorporated in a lot of martial arts. If you do not know these blocks, you either aren't taking the martial art that I took, or the teacher did not know these blocks existed. So a lot of blocks, if you do tie fighting, involve your knees, all right? So you got that. And a lot of involve elbows. So with the tapa, what you don't want to do is do this, because you're going to hit your tapa. So it would be block and then knee, or block and then strike. Now, if you're going to block with the tapa and they're throwing a kick here, boom, when you slam it down, you want to hurry up and release the tapa. Now, and when I say release, I don't mean release like that. I mean release it from in the chamber of under your arm. So boom, 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 or boom and boom. Those are your primary strikes for those who didn't see it from this angle. Boom, 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 block, strike. Block, strike, block, strike. Okay, that would be for your defenses for someone throwing a round kick and you step away, you can block it and come this way, or you can block it and come this way. Your best move is when you block it this way, you can double clap them in the middle. That's gonna take some finesse and everything that you're going to do is really gonna depend on your opponent's fuck up. So if your opponent throws one of these, 
and it's to the inside of you. You can block it here and strike it here, that would be karate. Or you can block it here and then strike it there, which would be kung fu. All right? I know, for all you new people in the room, kung fu is same movement, less time to make the movement. Where karate is that exact movement also, but it works on a counter basis. So for karate, when you are taught to block, it's always block and counter. Where Kung Fu, it's block and strike. Same thing with Kempo, which is block and strike. And those things are, are a lot easier to boom, boom. It's faster than boom and boom. All right? You'll figure it out. Now, the thing about fighting is you have to understand when to use karate and when to use Kung Fu. And if you're going to do Taekwondo or Kempo or anything else, same concept apply. So if I'm blocking and I step to the outside, I have become Kung Fu, boom. Or I block and step to the outside, I can go that way. Either way, I'm using Tampa, so I have the weapon. If I block correctly and they're throwing a kick and I block that shit, I'll probably break something on their body, which is the plan. So if they're broken, they're not going to want to continue the fight because they're going to be in a lot of pain unless they're an adrenaline jockey or they're on drugs. So in that being the case, you want to break everything. And by everything, I simply mean elbows and knees. That way you have incapacitated them and stopped them from doing harmful shit to you. Okay? So block, strike. That fucked up. The top of did not move. And when I fuck up, I own it. You know, so block, then strike. And then return. Now I'm using karate. Boom. And if I want to just do kung fu, boom, boom, boom. And everything's right there. I was in a Wing Chun stance anyway. So I blocked, strike, and then I strike. Where if I was in a karate stance, block, strike, because that's my counter, strike, you understand? From the front, so that you can see it. Block, strike, strike. Where a Kung Fu, it would be block, strike, strike. Understand the difference? If you don't understand the difference, let me break it down and try a little slower. So for Kung Fu, for most traditional Kung Fu's, they teach you to get to the outside of your opponent. So if you're throwing a punch with your right, I need to be over here on the outside of your right. If I'm on the inside of your right, I'm in trouble. Now I can block it this way and come up with the Tampa, providing that I'm stuck on the inside and I didn't get the option of being fast enough to get to your outside. So that being the case, I have two things. One positive, one negative. The positive is that I block and I can strike you. The negative is that you have another hand that can hit me or a foot because I blocked your strike and if I don't strike with this tampa, you're going to be able to strike me with your hand or one of those two feet. Because I just blocked the punch, but I didn't use the tampa. Which generally, if you're going to do it, it's going to look like this. Boom, you're stuck at the inside and then you're going to come up with the tampa. So from here, boom, boom. It's not going to be boom and then do nothing because he has a left hand. Most people fight like this. They generally fight in a standard stance. Boom, boom, so you're blocking. If they're in a southpaw stance or a wind chunk stance, your block is here. And this, let me put the Thomas down first. So I'm in a wind chunk stance, which is a southpaw stance for American boxers, where your right foot, your dominant foot is in front and your dominant hand is in front. So this hand is to protect all of this shit. This hand is also to protect all of this shit, but this is my retrieving striking hand. If you get past this hand, that's what this block is for. So if I'm doing Kung Fu or Wing Chun, and you throw a left jab, and I smack it, I have successfully eliminated the use of this hand. I don't have to use this to protect myself because I slapped it with that first block. But since I'm doing Wing Chun, I don't stop with the slap of that block. When I block it, I strike right after, push down and I strike. If I want to do a different form of Wing Chun, when I push, I will grab it, pull, break the elbow, and elbow you in the sternum or in the lower regions of your ribs, depending on how close I can get to you. The reason why I'm on the outside of your body is because you will have to cross your body or turn your body in some angle to hit me. Me being the smart person that I am, I'm not going to let that shit happen. So when you do that jab, boom, I break your elbow, and I'm going to strike. So break, strike, or break, and strike. You know, my strikes are not going to stop. 
I can go into chain punches from there also, but it's probably not going to be necessary because you're throwing a left jab. So if I sidestep and I catch right here, one side this side, the other side this side, my hands wasn't in that position, but that's one break because I'm going to pull and push. So I'm going to pull the wrist, push at the elbow, and you're punching. So it's your momentum and my momentum versus my ability to get to the side and snap it that way or snap it this way. So if you go through and I'm this way and my only availability is to clap this way and clap that way, then that means one hand is going to be on the inside, one hand is going to be on the outside, and I'm going to crush. Yeah, so your fist is going to go through, so this hand is more than likely going to be this hand, and this hand is going to be down here. So I'm crushing your shit when you throw your jab, which means I'm going to break the elbow. Once I break the elbow, I can turn it into karate by using a knee. I can turn it into kung fu by using the knee that's closest to you because it's not going to be as painful, but it's going to be a direct blow versus if I want to put power where I'm going to turn that knee and drive it into you. Because a lot of people don't understand it. Karate more than kung fu works on the torque of your body and your body positioning, where kung fu works on the directness of your body. So if I break it this way and I pull, if I want to do kung fu, this knee is the closest knee. It also gives me distance of your other side of your body, where if I pull this way and I use my left leg to turn into karate, I've also engaged in putting myself closer to a danger zone. Understand? Because if you catch my leg with your free hand after I've broken your arm, you're going to want to break my leg. So you're probably going to want to do the catch and elbow thing. The problem is you only have one arm. So you're not going to be too successful in that. So my job is to stay on the outside of you. Now, if you go back and watch all old school kung fu movies versus karate movies, you will be able to tell the difference with someone using kung fu because they're generally to the outside of their opponent. And that's when you see them doing all this boom, boom, and all this other crazy shit without an opponent. It looks silly, so I'm not going to continue. But, you know, you'll, you'll see their legs are clicking and clicking, and then they're sweeping, and it looks like, okay, so somebody's sweeping. I'm doing crane, and I'm going back, 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 and they're coming forward. They're engaging, but they're staying to my outside. The reason why they're staying to my outside is because it makes it work harder for me to get a good hit in. And that's why you also see that they switch positions. Like when they're doing like the leg sweeps and they're here and the other guy's here and then it's here and it's here and they keep stepping into these little formations. It's because if I can't get into you on the inside, then I'm doing a good damn job of failing. Where if you can't get into me and my blocking game is that good, then we're both going to be dancing for quite some time. So that's the kind of the tiny difference maker. Now Taekwondo was on a whole nother level of difference. So if you're taking Taekwondo, then you should know that everything snaps out. That includes your feet. You know, so if you want to do a turning round, you pop it, and then you pop it out. Now, there's a flaw in that. So, for those who know Taekwondo, welcome to James Williams Jr. Just about to piss you the fuck off shit. So being a person that takes Taekwondo, and you know, you're always taught lift, snap, down. Lift, snap, down. Okay, so if you're popping it out and popping it back or chambering it. When you get right here and you chamber that kick out, my ass is going to be smart enough to hit here, grab a leg, and I'm going to break your knee and sweep your foot. After I sweep your foot, I'm going to drop elbows into your no-no square. You're going to set up. I'm going to hit you in the throat or the sternum, depending on how tall you are. I really want to hit you in the throat, though, because I want to stop the fight and be done with it and go home because I'm almost 50 years old and I can't be playing with you young bucks. Now, what you see in the movies where you see them busting tornado kicks and jumping spin kicks and shit, I can almost guarantee you that shit ain't going to work. All right? For the movies, it works because it's a movie and you have to understand that everybody in this movie is specifically trained for a specific task to make sure that you can film tomorrow. Okay? The special effects are put in when it comes to like a scene with an arm getting broken or a leg getting broken versus the actor actually getting their shit broken because that takes away months and weeks and even years for the actor to heal. So this is why they got like the burlap sacks and the dummies and shit that is shaped like a hand or a foot. So when they do the personal, up close personal scenes of this guy getting his arm broke, you know, 
that's a mannequin arm or some kind of burlap sack made out to look like an arm. So I understand how that works because 10 scenes later, you know, I'm not fighting in a sleep. And you're like, but he got his arm broke at the first act of the movie. Yeah. But generally they put like, okay, six months later or some shit and his arm's healed. All right? But for the most indelibate scenes like that, it's generally a burlap sack. They don't break the stop man's arms. They don't pay these motherfuckers enough for that. But because it's a movie, it needs to look good. So when you see our boy Donnie Yen doing his Wing Chun versus you see my Wing Chun, all right? Let me explain that because a lot of people don't understand what you just saw, all right? If you watch a lot of Donnie Yen movies, sometimes his Wing Chun, his hand is this way, and sometimes his top hand is this way, all right? Now, the principle of that is really simple. If my hand is this way, it's going to make it easier for me to do a knuckle strike, but it's also going to make it easier for me to let that blow go by and put my ass in the position that I can break your elbow by grabbing, pushing, and pulling. All right? Donnie Yen, forgive me. That may not be your purpose, but for all medicinal fighting purposes, that's why it's this. And the same thing with karate, when you see them do this, like they're in a chop position instead of the hand fighting position. I'm also in a Wing Chun stance versus a karate stance. So you understand that this is also a southpaw fighting stance for traditional boxing. So boom, boom, boom. No, and then if you're in a standard boxing stance, boom, boom, boom. So, you know, you're taught jab, jab, cross, jab, jab, uppercut. And then you're taught block, block, boom, 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 uppercuts. You know, you're taught these things when you're training. All right? Now, here's the fun part. You're also taught this. You know, you're taught that. And you also are taught in a triangle step. You know, you're taught that. Yeah, and, and also you are taught an X block can lead to this block, can lead to this block, instead of those blocks. When you are taught those things, you are taught those things for an absolutely crazy purpose. I do not have that purpose because I don't use those blocks when I'm in a real fight. When I'm in a real fight, I'm in standard boxing block formation. The reason for that is, let's be honest, if you see me break down, Get in the horse stance and get the triangle chop ready, you know, because this goes there, depending on who's teaching you what, and then you go there, and then you go there. You're not going to let that happen in a fight. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. In the movies, they don't even do that. Because in the movies, it's always, let's keep it as real as possible. Everybody's going to be jumping from side to side, bobbing front, bobbing back, because that's realistic. But when you're in that dojo... More for time. You know, you're going to be doing that shit. The thing is, though, when you're in that dojo, 70% of the shit works only in the dojo. 30% works outside. The shit that works outside is the shit you really need to know. The shit in the dojo is good for competition. It's good for everything inside that dojo. They don't teach you that shit. You learn that shit by experience, and you learn that shit the hard way. So, you know, be careful at what you learn. Be careful who teaches you what. Now, before I close out, because this went, like, totally south, <laughs> the, the thing is, I want you all to understand that every martial art nowadays has evolved. Wing Chun has always had elbows and knees. It just was not something utilized. And the reason why it doesn't utilize is because in the movies, there are some things that they kind of leave out. All right? Karate also has always had knees. It just depends on who teaches you what. It wasn't always a tie fighting thing. Tie fighting emphasizes knees, forearms, and elbows because in Thailand, that's basically what they use. They rarely did many kicks. However, you can get your references from Kickboxer, the movie, and other movies in such a nature. There are lots of martial art documentaries. Please go check them out. I am not in any one of them. Not yet. I have to become famous. I have to be a champion for someone to even give me a notice. But thanks to the thousand of you here, I at least can get some acknowledgement here. But I'm not going to teach you some shit that's not going to help you. I'm going to teach you shit that works, but you have to practice. If you don't practice, you're wasting your time. Do not waste your time. Life is too short. So if you're not practicing, boom, 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 boom. This is your chain punches for Wing Chun. So from the side so that you can see, block, strike, 
doom, doom, doom. You go straight into your chain punches. Now, not every Wing Chun master does that shit. I understand some of them motherfuckers will block low gung fu kick you and then go into chain punches. They might block, boom, low gung fu, turn it round. You don't know who you're fighting until the fight starts. I pray that you find a good ending. That being said, I want to thank you all here for TikTok. And I want to thank you all here on Instagram for Kung Fu Havoc number two, BCNU. For TikTok, you guys mean the world to me. I greatly appreciate you letting me come into your life at this time of the nighttime.